This project utilizes a barbecue rotisserie kit. While they can be spendy for new ones, used ones always seem to be available on Kijiji, Facebook Marketplace, etc. The adaptation that I did for my first DIY rod dryer allowed me to easily convert it back and forth in the case that it was required for barbecue use, so it was dual purpose. The Grill Pro rotisserie kit that I'm using for this project was for sale on Kijiji for $25. Broil King offers exactly the same kit, but just rebranded. They are the most common ones you'll see up for sale on Kijiji or Facebook Marketplace. For this project, I'll be using the motor, the small support bracket, the motor mounting bracket, the collet for the spit, and the spit rod extension piece. I'll also be using the main spit rod just for measurement purposes. For tools, fasteners, and other materials, I'll be using an electric drill, a tape measure, a number two Robertson bit for the deck screws, a Phillips bit for the drywall screws, a combination square, a carpenter square, a 1 8 drill bit to make the screw pilot holes in the base, number eight by one and a half deck screws to fasten the base to the two by four upright, number six by one inch drywall screws for fastening the brackets, and a pencil. Items not pictured are a wood saw, I'm using a radial arm miter saw, a hacksaw to cut one end off the spit rod extension and a metal file to clean up the burrs, and lastly a bar clamp to act as a third hand during assembly. I'm using the shelf I saved from an old pantry for the base and a scrap piece of 2x4 for the upright. Well, the weather just took a turn for the worse, so I think we're going to move this project inside. That means we won't be getting any footage of the drilling or the sawing or any of the other messy parts of this uh, project, so um, I'm sure everybody knows what sawing and drilling looks like, so I'll just show you the results and the assembly of the rod dryer. You would normally utilize your rod building jig to support the length of the rods when being rotated by the rod dryer. Therefore, finding the approximate height at which the butt of the rod protrudes from the jig is necessary to determine the height of your rod dryer. Mine appears to be about six and a half inches high. So the first thing I did was I squared off the end of my rough scrap two by four. The reason I did that was so that this fits nice and squarely on there. It's not great. It's just like it was made for it. And the hole. And there we go. It is installed as we do know that my base is half an inch thick so when we measured it was six and a half inches so what we do is we take our motor take our motor slide it onto the bracket I just take the long spit that. Try and make sure it's on a fairly square with the 2x4. I take my tape and pencil. And I want to measure down six inches from the center line. So, take that, take our combination square, okay. 
So there it is, all cut, ready to rock. So this is what I'm using for my base. It's an old piece of shelving. It's about 12 inches this way. So I think I want my base to be about 12 by six. So we'll go six inches this way. And we'll go cut it. All right. I pre-drilled as I said I was going to do, but I'll tell you what, how I arrived at this. This is my center point. So it's six inches wide, this is three inches. And this is my center point that I marked. Okay, so I carried it over to the edge like that because I'm going to use that center point when I mount the upright. Now the upright being the two by four is about three and a half inches that way and that means I want my screw holes to be spaced about three quarters of an inch from the center line on each side. Okay, so this distance is three quarters, this distance is three quarters of an inch. And because a two by four is actually an inch and a half, not two, I measured in three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch to get to the center of the two by four where it's going to sit. And that's where I drilled my holes. So now we measure our two by four for the center here. And it's an inch and three quarters because again, it's three and a half inches wide. So the center point is an inch and three quarters. So I marked that on there, as you can see, and that's why I wanted that center line there. And that's how it'll mount. Okay, got the upright in position on the center line and holding it in place with a clamp. So I can securely screw it down to the base, or screw the base to the two by four. There you are, starting to take shape, eh? Now we're going to line everything up so that we can get this support bracket for the uh, collet. We can get that lined up with the motor because it sits a little higher than you might think it would. So I've got the uh, spit rod extension that came with the kit. It's, it's a universal, so this is an extension. It had threads on both sides. I cut them off of this side. This is the collet that goes on the spit rod and it sits in the this little bracket on the other end of the barbecue so i thought i would use it as a support and also to keep this rod from coming out of the motor so when that collet's in place it's not going to be able to push that way so that's what i'm trying to do all at once here i'm trying to get this bracket at the right level and get this call it in the right position. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to slide this on and it's a little bit loose. That's what I want. I want it to be able to slide back and forth. I'm going to seat the shaft into the motor and I'm going to put it down onto my mounting bracket like so. Then I'm going to take this 
and I'm going to eyeball it until I think it's nice and level, which it is. It's almost dead on. Man, that's perfect. So I'll just take note of the holes that are lining up there. And I'll mount this bracket. Again, as with the uh, motor bracket, I'm using the one inch drywall screws. I have changed the bit out on the drill. So I've got a Phillips bit in there. The screws for the small bracket will also uh, support the motor bracket as well. I only had one screw on it knowing that I'd be putting more in. So there. So that's in place. So now we'll set up the collet. So you put the shaft in first with the collet on it and slide the motor down and then you push the collet forward while keeping the shaft in the motor and then you tighten that set screw just like that and your DIY rod dryer is finished. So I thought I'd show you how this thing works. I just wanted to make a couple of notes before I started here. Uh, one, the collet, I had it on backwards or I didn't know it was backwards, but uh, once I tried to run it, I, I knew it was backwards. The screw was actually hitting the uh, the bracket. So all I did was just switch the collet around. Now it's free and clear. I also added the coupling that's used on the spit extension. It just brings the diameter up a little closer to the rod that I'm attaching to it. The other addition is uh, just a small three pound weight just to keep it all stable. I didn't, I don't think I needed it, but just in case. So now what you want to do is you just want to line up the dryer with the rod. You want to do all of this before you put the finish on. Otherwise you're going to be scrambling and you're going to get in trouble. The other thing is you want the blank to be in here, not the handle, because that's going to cantilever the, the end of the blank up quite a bit to the point where you won't be able to attach it to the dryer. And make sure all of the guides are going to be free and clear to spin around. All you do to attach the rod is use masking tape. And I usually start with a shorter piece just to get it centered on there. It already is pretty much centered. And then I'll start with longer wraps to ensure that it stays in place on that mandrel. It's a really good idea to prepare lengths of tape before you start the finishing process because time is of the essence when you're attaching the rod to the dryer. You don't want your finish to sag and start dripping off. And once it's all taped down, you start the dryer. <laughs> 